Welcome all, as CivilNet continues to cover the Armenian Society of Fellows Conference here in Dilijan, I'm very pleased to be joined by both Irene Mahoyan, an aerospace engineer based in the Netherlands and specializing in aeroserval elasticity, and also Mr. Oshin Perumyan, CTO at Metacomp Technologies. So I hope I got that right. Thank yes. you both very much for your time. Um, I want to first off ask about the Society of Fellows' Um, idea to set up various cores because this is multidisciplinary concept and you have all sorts of spheres uh, of specialists and the core you both are involved in um, each core has been tasked with coming up with some sort of concept I believe and I'm wondering what was the core you both were involved in, what was your approach? Should I take this one? Um, so first of all, um, ASOF as an organization, as you pointed out, has uh, different branches, if you want to call it. And the branch that we fall under is the Center for Advanced Science and Technology. So that is the virtual, let's say, organization under which there will be different divisions that will basically engage in different scientific fields. Uh, there's robotics, there's AI and so on. Ours is a division of aerospace engineering and we're specifically going to target uh, aeronautical and space engineering research. So that's how we fit in with, within the whole ASOF sphere and that allows us to look for synergies between our specific field and other fields. Mm -hmm. For example, part of what we are proposing has parallels with what the AI field is proposing. So because we're under the same umbrella, that allows us to uh, very seamlessly work together and uh, do joint proposals, joint research, and so on. And it's interesting that concept of synergy between the different uh, uh, specializations. I mean, one could argue aerospace engineering is very much to do with electrical engineering, with mechanical engineering. Exactly. So, I mean, could you speak a bit more about that idea of synergy and how all these different disciplines can almost complement each other to an extent? They certainly do. Uh, I think um, the field uh, in recent years has become increasing, increasingly interdisciplinary. Mm -hmm. And uh, you will have to um, be very on top of that fact and embrace the fact that complex things, complex system, complex physical, uh, dynamical system, you will have to account for very different things that are acting. Uh, for example, in my field, there is the aerodynamics, there is the structure, there is very flexible, there is the, the, uh, the control systems and the control law. So it's already interdisciplinary and all those disciplines must be in synergy and you will have to embrace that complexity in order to go beyond what we have now. And uh, that goes also for electrical engineering, uh, aer aeronautics, uh, avionics or space instruments. Uh, it also goes for control systems and uh, it, there's always a synergy and aerospace engineering is, is very broad. And the, the key is that because of this multidisciplinary and uh, uh, multi kind of physics applications which are nascent currently, it's, it's a new field. Uh, there aren't set uh, traditional, let's say, research institutes that actually have years of experience doing this. Mm -hmm. It levels the playing field for a research center with, within Armenia, which is what we're proposing, to be competitive on the world stage because it's a nascent field. But so tell us more about this research center, because I'm sure our watchers would be very interested by that. Um, so the research center that we're proposing, uh, it has three specific parts. Mm. One is a research component, which I will let Yuren uh, fill in. The second one is a uh, curriculum-based educational component, which again, she will give the details. And the third one is whenever we talk about aerospace engineering, and doing experiments, we require facilities, whether they're experimental, computational, and so on. Uh, a lot of infrastructure is needed. And we think that 
some of the infrastructure exists, but not all in one place. Certain entities have certain infrastructure, certain other entities have other things that we can use, but no one entity has everything that is required. So part of what we're proposing is to put together a consortium of infrastructure sharing. That would be the third component. So I'll let Yuren explain the curriculum and the uh, research component. Well, for the curriculum, what we um, found out is that the seed of this passion for aerospace engineering needs to be planted at the earlier stage. So we would generally want it to be planted in, during the high school years, but uh, what we notice is that there is a big gap. If we, we, we would like to offer uh, master's programs, there is a big gap in, in knowledge. Mm -hmm. So we, would, we thought that it would be um, helpful to introduce a, a minor program so we could offer a certain number of courses that could be complementary to, to mechanical engineering or general engineering uh, existing bachelor uh, so that students could do those elective courses and have a certificate in, in, in aerospace engineering that could offer them a path towards a master's program in, uh, in aerospace engineering. So almost not dictating to them that it has to solely be about yeah. aerospace no, engineering. No. So they have the, the broad engineering background uh, that could be any engineering, generally mechanical engineering has the uh, components that you would like to uh, have in order to complement them to go to your aerospace engineering background. So you, you have your mathematics background, physics background, uh, your mechanics uh, background, that's good. Mm -hmm. And then you complement uh, by adding certain co courses that are specifically aerospace engineering courses at the undergraduate level so that students uh, have the background and they already have uh, experienced what it is and they can choose to uh, proceed uh, their studies uh, at the, the graduate level. So I suppose this is part of some of the changes you guys are proposing with regards to education. Right. I'm wondering though, uh, in the Netherlands, for example, what is being done? What is some of the interesting things being done that is igniting passion in students that is, you know, uh, creating a real complex infrastructure system that is not yet materializing? In, um, well, the Netherlands has a very, um, has a history uh, in aerospace engineering. So they've been doing this for a very long time. And um, it, it started small at the, the mechanical engineering uh, and it, it grew. And I think it can grow like that in Armenia too. So it's, um, uh, it's a popular field in the Netherlands. So a lot of students choose to, to do aerospace engineering. It's tough, mm -hmm. uh, but it gives you uh, the right skills to be wanted in any field uh, it could be even in management, a lot of people uh, from, yes, uh, management, consulting. So it's, it's very, uh, it gives you the critical thinking uh, skills. So it, it doesn't um, limit you into that direction. So it would be just great to cultivate that uh, thinking in, in, in Armenian students so they uh, become real problem solvers. That's, uh, but it's key that we point out that based on our interactions with entities within Armenia, there are entities that are currently engaged in some of that. So we have uh, non-university education foundations like IOS, which deals with uh, school children and rocketry and other types of uh, interactions at that age. Uh, we have the Arin Mehrabian Foundation that is teaching all sorts of courses for the general public that is somewhat, let's say, aerospace or engineering related. And we have, uh, for example, Bazunk. Yesterday they had a fantastic uh, presentation. They're doing all sorts of stuff from middle school, high school to university in aerospace. Mm -hmm. So they're teaching them rocketry and other types of things. The same thing at Engineering City. We visited Engineering City and some of the high school students go to Engineering City and build model planes, model rockets. So there is a movement out there. Uh, perhaps it needs to be cultivated. And one of the things that our center can do is help cultivate. Well, that's an interesting uh, concept, but, but please explain it to our watchers. Engineering City, how would you explain this to, to, our, to our watchers? Okay, so Engineering City, the concept behind Engineering City is 
to bring together uh, companies that are basically their direction of research work or uh, whatever they're producing is engineering related. So the government of Armenia, from what I understand, I'm not an expert, uh, has basically allocated land in Avon, which basically in Bargavand. And uh, that piece of land uh, is allocated in 250 meter or 500 meter parcels. And the government of Armenia, if you produce a uh, basically a white paper, let's say, that explains what your company is going to do, what it's going to engage in, uh, what type of activities it is going to do. Um, if it is related to engineering, you will get the land uh, free of charge and you can build on top of that land and uh, start your... So you're, you, you have to build it, they will give you the land, and once you build it, you can do your startup or do whatever. Now that's part of it. The other part of Engineering City is uh, they have created a lab space that they're building and they've created another big building where uh, you can actually take rental space if you are engaged in engineering. And our research center is looking into the possibility of perhaps becoming one of those renters. Mm -hmm. Currently they have buildings that um, are occupied by people who are doing real uh, type of engineering, including aerospace engineering. There's one firm there, Yerevan Aerospace Engineering, that is doing real life engineering in aerospace. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is a really interesting project because it brings together in Armenia all the entities that are engaged in engineering. And we were talking about synergies of avenues of cooperation. It is the perfect place for one company to see what another company is doing and then together they're stronger. And there'll be a presence of aerospace engineers yes. there we, as well. If we go, uh, of course there is already, like I said, there is a company there that does aerospace engineering. One of the things that, one of the places where we're looking at as a possibility to have our research center hosted or housed is engineering. Is engineering city. I would think that there would be more buzz about aerospace engineering among, uh, amongst the youth in Armenia. I mean, how would you describe the, the, the state of the, the passion for aerospace engineering at the I, moment? I think, I think um, there is a misconception uh, in, well, there's a misconception because what I've noticed is that most are focusing on programming uh, Robots, so it's coding of robots or coding of or, or of, of flying uh, flying robots or drones, and um, that's what people think aerospace engineering is. Uh, but those are pre-existing platforms. You just do the software to command them, and and uh, and perform some some mission or tasks. That's not what aerospace engineering is about. It's about actually creating, uh, analyzing, and optimizing. Uh, flight vehicles. Uh, so that's that's a different different thing. And I hope that at some point there is a the switch goes on and and kids understand that they would actually it would be very interesting to actually know how this flight vehicle works uh, and how can you change things to make it perform better and not only code because code is not going to do uh, more than it. It is so. It it has its limits. Uh, code will not make your, uh, the, will not change the limits of your optimum. Never. Mm -hmm. So I just hope that we can get them to have that passion to actually make rockets, uh, launch them, improve them, make uh, fixed wing uh, small drones, uh, fly them, uh, do measurements, do analysis, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Things like that. Well, you would think as a landlocked mountainous country that is really aiming to develop as fast as it can, this is kind of a no-brainer. But so, as I'm understanding, it's about also igniting that interest and passion in, in students. This is, this is right. one of the main hurdles you're facing. I think the part of the problem is whenever we talk about aerospace engineering, mm -hmm. those two words tell us it's either aeronautical or space. So it's either gotta be flying or doing something in outer space. I'll give you a perfect example. We see a lot of BMWs and Mercedes-Benz on the streets of Yerevan. The small diesel pump or the small gasoline pump that sits in that engine is designed by aerospace engineers. 
The whole car design, the yeah. shape. The, the shape is designed, the aerodynamics is shaped by aerospace. But that small, small nozzles, right, they say, or, or the pump, right? So that is designed by aerospace engineers because it's fluid dynamics. We don't understand that because we think aerospace, it's got to fly. It doesn't have to fly because there's a lot of systems in a lot of everyday applications, and that's the beauty of it because there's technologies spill over into secondary and tertiary applications that we use every day that comes from aerospace engineering. And that's what we need to instill in the young kids in Armenia. Being landlocked, we can build pumps. We don't need sea or anything else to build pumps. Mm -hmm. It's the simplest thing. Yeah. Pipeline analysis is done by aerospace engineers mm -hmm. because that's fluid structure interaction. It's, uh, and uh, so there's so much sailing. And Armenia is talking about re, like renovating the whole pipeline system across the country <laughs> and connecting to other countries. So that's, that's yeah. super interesting. I'll, I'll give you another example. When I moved to Armenia in 2006, we didn't have water in the city center 24 hours a day. It was on an hour in the morning, on an hour at night. It's no longer the case. Why? Because a person who understands the fluid dynamics, the losses and everything in the piping system came and said, no, 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 this is not right. You close this, you open that, you do this, losses are less and so on. All of a sudden, at least the city center has 24 hours of water. Aerospace engineering, believe it or not. Under the ground, nothing to do with the air. It's still aerospace engineering. Okay, that's interesting. Fluid that dynamics. So many misconceptions about aerospace engineering. Okay, well, all things aerospace. <laughs> and it's, it's it's one of the fields with the most spillover technology. It's uh, it, they've contributed to uh, so research and development in aerospace has contributed to uh, medical technology to mm -hmm. to bioengineering to everything. You can, there's no one field where it's I, I think now that I had this mattresses even. Uh, so it's, 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 it has contributed to every field of engineering and, uh, 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 and customer products um, you can think of. Okay. So. Well, you definitely sold me. I should have become an aerospace <laughs> yes, engineer absolutely. instead of a journalist. Absolutely. Okay, well, Oshin Perumyan and Irene Mahoyan, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you very thank much. You. And thank you for joining us on CivilNet.